Okay, welcome back to the ELM test prep series by James S. That's me. And what I'm going to do is look at a couple special questions. We talked about graphing equations. Now, one of the things we I didn't specifically talk about was whether something would be considered linear or nonlinear. Well, this probably is a lot more simple than, and you probably see this right off the bat. Linear has to do with a line, and nonlinear means it's not exactly a line, it's a straight line. But the specific here is they're both lines, but this is a straight line and this is not straight. So, I would represent this with an equation like y equals 2x plus 3. And the term that makes this linear is the x term right here. There's no exponent on it. Um, if this were a graph like this or like this, I might say this is y equals uh, minus x squared plus 2. And this might be y equals 2x squared minus 3, something like that. But what makes this nonlinear is the fact that this x term has something other than just a 1 for an exponent. It has a 2 or possibly uh, some other value, even a uh, 3. But the difference here is linear means it's a straight line and my equation will have just an x. Nonlinear means that I've got an x squared, an x cubed, or x to some exponent. x to some exponent. Etc. 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 So, and possibly, well, there is one other. No, that's. There is a situation where I might have one over x, even though it only had an exponent of one. This tends to be nonlinear because as x gets larger, this comes down to a zero, and it's sort of curved like that. You wouldn't, I don't think you're going to give you something like that on your ELM. They might give you something like this, and certainly they might ask you something like this. Okay, so the other thing they might do They might give you something like this. Well, x squared y z five minus equals five minus a. I better do a b here because my a's tend to look like nines. So, the type of question they might ask you for is, well, solve this for y. In other words, when they say solve for y, they want y on one side and everything else on the other. So let's just temporarily put a parenthesis around that and to remind us that we're going to try and hold on to that. There's no plus or minus here. Over here I'm going to just put a parenthesis around that because these are two terms separated with a negative. And there's nothing over here uh, in terms of plus or minus to separate the terms. So this is all multiplication or division over here. Well, to undo this division by z, I'm going to multiply this side and this side by z. And these z's will cancel out. Well, now I have 3x squared times y. Well, I'm multiplying by this quantity here, so I want to divide by that. So I'm going to multiply by 1 over 3x squared. Essentially, I'm going to divide both sides by 3x squared. If I do 1 over that, it just this is in the denominator, this is in the denominator. These then cancel out, and the only thing left is what I had in the parentheses, which was what I wanted, was y, and then I will just bring this whole thing down. That equals my answer right there. 
So that's one of the other kind of things that they might do. They'll give you a bunch of stuff, and then they'll, they'll ask you to pull something out of the middle of it. And essentially what you just want to do is you want to kind of grab your mind onto that item and then move everything else away from it. Let's say we had uh, x, y over z minus 3 equals q. Well, let's solve it for x. Or better yet, let's solve it for z. That's probably even trickier. Okay, so my z term that I want to solve for is in here. It's, it's kind of stuck inside this whole cluster here. So I'm going to undo the 3. I'm subtracting 3 from this group. So what I want to do is I just want to undo that subtraction. So I'm going to add 3 to this side and add 3 to this side. Well, that makes it nice because minus 3 and a plus 3, that just is 0. So that goes away. Now I've got this quantity here, two terms separated by a plus. Well, I've got a z on the bottom here, and I really want it by itself on the other side or on this side, but I want it on top. So here's one quick way to do this. Let's put this over 1 because we can do that. I'm going to just take this out of my way, give myself some visual room here. And what I'm going to do is I want the, I'd like to have the z on top because it's just easier to do. So now that I have this over 1, I'm just going to flip both sides. I'm going to flip this side and make this z on top and the x, y on the bottom equals 1 on top and the q plus 3 is on the bottom. All I did was invert both sides. That doesn't change anything except the appearance of where, where my z is. I'm still looking to solve for z. So, I want to get this guy by himself. Well, I'm dividing by xy, so I'm going to undo that by multiplying both sides by xy. That will cancel that. Now I have my z all by itself. Everything is gone except my z. And over here, if I put that over 1, I'll, I can see that my xy is going to be up on top in my numerator, and the q plus 3 will remain down in the denominator. One times that, and one times that, and I get that. So there is my final answer on that. And, and this is a very common kind of problem that you'll run into. It's not difficult if you just take your time, circle the item that you're trying to find, and then just get rid of everything else. And a little trick that I pulled I'm going to put the X on the bottom. I want to so solve for X, so I want to put it on the bottom. I want to have it up on top, so I put this over 1. And I just flip both sides. This becomes X over 2 equals 1 over A. And now all I have to do is multiply both sides by 2, and I have my X on top where I want it. Now certainly I could have done it another way but that's probably one of the easiest ways is just take both make both sides a fraction and flip them over all right okay i see we're running up on our 10 minute mark so enough of the special questions at least at this point hope that was helpful uh, like i say these are just these are just tricky little questions that if you just take your time and undo what's being done to something look at where what you're trying to hold on to and then just pull that out from the inside the the whole group separate it and then you'll get your solution all right thank you for listening have a good day